Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for over 50, I've got not one, but two much requested foundations to review for you today. And they are the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation going head to head against the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So these are the two foundations that you guys have requested the most over the last couple of weeks. I think they're each having kind of a moment. They're both new releases. They seem kind of similar to me. And so I thought, you know what, let me just put them in a head to head battle and we will see which one comes out on top. So in today's video, we're gonna see how these foundations perform on more mature, less than perfect skin. I am 60 years old and I have my fair share of of wrinkles, enlarged pores, age spots, other stuff that I want my foundation to cover up, that I don't want my foundation to settle into. I want my foundation to make my skin look better and more youthful than it is, while at the same time not looking like a mask of makeup. So <laughs> it's a tall order, but I have found a lot of really great foundations that fit those bills. So we'll see if either of these two can join the group of my holy grails today or not. I've probably worn them both two or three times. I recorded one full day of footage in each of them, so we'll get a full one day wear test on the hourglass, a full one day wear test on the house. And then I also did one day where I put one on one side of my face and one on the other to see how they performed head to head. So let's look at them individually first. Let's start with the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This retails for $45 for one ounce and it comes in 50 shades. This is a medium coverage, weightless, clean foundation with fermented arnica that is supposed to reduce redness in your skin. It has a natural finish. It also contains something that they call IntelliZen 7 Complex. That is a blend of medicinal herbs. It also contains something they're calling BioFerment 7 Complex as well. They're into the 7 Complex. That's a blend of antioxidants that are from plants. And it's also vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. I checked out the ingredients on this, aside from the call-outs that they want you to notice, what is in here is mainly water and silicones. Of the first 13 ingredients in here, nine of them are silicones, so I don't know how you feel about silicones. I think they're fine. I'm not super into having skincare in my makeup. By the time I have my skincare on, then my sunscreen, and then my foundation, I'm not really expecting a lot of skincare out of foundation, but if you like that kind of thing, I have no problem with it. So this is contained in a frosted glass bottle. It's a really heavyweight bottle. It's very um, luxe looking and it has a pump dispenser under there, so that's great. I went on the House Labs website to play with their shade finder. They matched me to shade 210, which is a light, medium, neutral. That was too light for me. I also bought shade 220, which is also a light, medium, neutral shade, and that seems to work a lot better for my skin tone. I'm not sure it's a perfect match for me, but it was good enough to do the review. So let me bring in the footage now of the full day that I wore this and we will take a look at how it looked and how it performed on my more mature, less than perfect skin. I applied a bit over my undefined R&R &R sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen, but it works beautifully under makeup. I applied it to one side of my face using a damp beauty blender sponge. It went on very nicely with the sponge. It gave really smooth, even coverage. There were no streak marks or uneven patches or anything like that. I thought it went on really nicely with the sponge. On the other side of my face, I used my BK 101 brush and it didn't go on quite as well with the brush. Granted, it may be that my brush needs cleaning, but there were a few streaks in the brush side and it did look a lot heavier and a little bit more makeup-y on the brush side than it did on the sponge side. So I went ahead and just pounced over it with the sponge just so that both sides looked even. It gave solid medium coverage with one pump. The finish was pretty luminous, a little bit more luminous than I like. I felt like it did accentuate pores and texture. The foundation does have a fragrance. It's not a super strong fragrance, but I did notice it while I was applying it. My first impression on it was that I thought it looked fine, but it wasn't blowing my doors off. You know, sometimes I'll put on a new foundation. I'll be like, oh my God, that looks so natural. And it's just sitting on my skin so beautifully. I didn't have any of those thoughts with this one. I thought it just looked 
fine. And I gotta say, it wasn't the most natural looking makeup. I went ahead and set one side of my face with my NYX Matte Mineral Powder to take down the shine and reduce the look of my pores and texture. And I left the other side unset. The foundation with one side set and the other side not. I applied the rest of my makeup and I gotta say I had a little trouble blending my bronzer over this foundation. I was using the NARS Laguna bronzer, which you know I've used for years and I've never had a problem blending it. Um, and it just really wouldn't blend well. And it also seemed to ball and pill a little bit. Little tiniest bit of settling here and none on this side. So, all right, um, let me go and do the flash test. We're not gonna get a sunshine test on it. It's supposed to rain all this week. Here's the flash picture on the House Labs foundation. I feel like, well, it's not really giving me flashback. It is um, giving me a lot of glare because it is such a shiny foundation, especially on the side that I didn't set. But here it is in natural window light. and in artificial indoor light as well. So I went ahead and wore it all day, came back to the camera for a five hour check-in. Hi guys, I am back for the five hour check-in. Um, <laughs> this is one of those foundations that uh, when I see myself in a mirror, sometimes I like it and sometimes I hate it. So it's been like a 50-50, depending on how the light's coming in. Sometimes I'm like, ah, it's making my skin look so textury. Ah, it looks so makeup-y. Ah, it looks so greasy. And then sometimes I'm like, yeah, it looks okay, but never has it been like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. So, you know, from a distance or without my glasses on, it looks fine, <laughs> but it's very worn off up here. It's very broken up on the surface here. It looks very speckly and weird kind of settling into wrinkles as well. I'm definitely wearing off around my nostrils already. Just don't really like how it looks sitting on my skin. It definitely looks like makeup sitting on my skin. I feel like it's making this part of my upper lip look more wrinkled, very kind of worn off over here. So yeah, just, um, I don't love it. I don't like how it looks. I want to take it off right now. I don't want to even wait for the 10 hour check-in. So not happy with this one. Okay, 10 hour check-in on the House Labs foundation. Um, what can I say? I don't like it any more than I did previously. Uh, it is majorly worn off on my nose, very worn off on the side of my face, on my forehead. It's just pretty much gone. It has disappeared. It's kind of, it's gotten kind of like shiny and a little oily looking during the day. I'd say the side with the setting powder is wearing a lot better than the side without the setting powder. This side, it just kind of like slid around and melted off my face and got really patchy really early on. Like it didn't even look good for three hours, I want to say, before it started getting like patchy and weird. I was definitely not terribly impressed with this foundation. I didn't hate it. It wasn't one of the worst things I've ever worn. It didn't dry my skin. It didn't look cakey. So while I didn't hate it, I didn't really love it either. All right, next let's talk about the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This retails for $58 for one ounce. It comes in 32 shades. This is a weightless medium coverage foundation with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours of wear. It's supposed to have a natural finish and light diffusing pigments to deliver a soft focus finish. It's also supposed to have blurring spheres to minimize the look of lines and wrinkles. It also contains antioxidants. It's vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free, and paraben-free. This one is also mainly water and silicones. Six out of the first 10 ingredients are silicones. This one is also packaged in a frosted glass bottle with a pump dispenser. I went on the Hourglass website to be shade matched and they matched me to shade 6.5, which is a light medium with neutral undertones. I did buy a second shade, shade 7.5, which is also supposed to be a light to medium with neutral undertones. The one that I used was the 6.5 in the footage. I applied one pump of it over the same sunscreen that I used for the house labs. It's the undefined R&R sunscreen. Again, doesn't change the wear 
of the foundation. I applied it on one side of my face with my BK101 brush and I used my damp beauty blender sponge on the other. It went on well with both the sponge and the brush, but I did prefer the look of the sponge side because it looked a little bit heavier on the brush side. It sits beautifully on the skin and looks really natural and really nice. The finish is a soft glow, but I don't really see a huge amount of blurring or soft focusing of my pores or wrinkles. I set one side of my face with NYX Matte Mineral Powder and let the other side unset. And I really like how it looks with the rest of my makeup on. It played well with everything. I used all the same makeup over this as I did with the other foundation. It doesn't look heavy or mask-like, but it did set into wrinkles on my forehead. I really like this with the rest of my makeup on. It played well with others. It's giving me a nice medium coverage, um, unifying my skin tone. It doesn't look heavy or cakey. It doesn't feel like goopy or unset, feels like it's gonna stay in place. So hopefully it's gonna be a good one. Let me take you outside to do the sunshine test. We'll go in the dark closet to do the flash test. And then I'll wear it for the rest of the day and we'll see how it goes. This side has no setting powder. This side has setting powder. All right, here's the Hourglass Foundation in indirect window light. Hourglass Foundation in yellowy overhead light. Here is what the Hourglass looks like in the flash photo. I think this actually photographs really, really nicely and it doesn't seem to be giving me anything in the way of flashback. All right, hey you guys, I'm back. It's time for the five hour check-in on the Hourglass uh, Foundation. Wow, it's already starting to wear off on my nose. My nostrils are pink. Definitely came off where my glasses were. It has gotten really shiny on the side of my face that I didn't set. The side of my face that I set looks much less oily, much less um, greasy. It's already wearing off here at my nostrils and it's looking a little thin up here on my forehead. It's not really sliding around or doing anything terrible. I just don't think it looks fantastic. When I first looked at it up close, I was like, yeah, that looks terrible. It's definitely causing like settling here in my crow's feet because I don't really put concealer there. And so that's definitely foundation. It's definitely getting a lot thinner here already. Good news is I'm not getting any settling here or here where I do usually get settling with other foundations. At the 10 hour check-in, again, it didn't look terrible, but it didn't look great either. It was pretty worn off and patchy looking all over. It wasn't looking great for something that promises 16 hours of wear. I think my pores look smoother on the side with setting powder, but without powder, it's definitely accentuating my pores and texture. So I'm gonna give it a fail on its promise to be blurring and to soft focus my pores. So I didn't hate it. I kind of liked it when I first put it on. I thought it looked pretty good throughout the day, but it just wasn't giving me that like top notch performance that I really have come to expect out of my best foundations. So just for fun, I put them both on on the same day, one on one side of my face, one on the other side of my face, and I switched up the sunscreen to see if using a chemical sunscreen would help at all. I used the Beauty of Joseon SPF 50. In this footage, I have the house foundation on the right side of my face on your screen and on the left I have the hourglass. I went ahead and set both sides with the NYX Matte Mineral Powder because I thought that that helped both of the foundations look better on the previous times that I had worn them both. And then I went ahead and I gave the whole thing a spritz of Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray because this really can help foundations last a lot longer. So I was hoping to get more than five hours of wear out of both of them. So when I first put them both on, I thought they looked fine. Again, um, you know, nothing wrong with either of them when they're first applied. So I wore them throughout the day. I came back to the camera for a four hour check-in. I was going out to play trivia and I wouldn't be there at the five hour check-in, but I thought they both looked better after using the setting spray than they had without using the setting spray. They were less worn off than when I used them without the setting spray. But that said, I still wasn't loving either of them either. So I went to trivia 
We came in second, by the way. Woohoo! Um, and that was a fun night out. Then we came back here and had ice cream and celebrated my baby dog's third birthday. So that was also fun. But I did come back to the camera for the 10 hour check in. And I gotta say, boy, can you see a difference between these foundations at the 10 hour check in. The house labs foundation side that is completely worn off there is no foundation left on that side of my face and the hourglass side of my face was still mainly in place and i definitely thought that that side of my face looked way better than the house lab side so for today's video i'm giving the hourglass ambient soft glow foundation the win it's the one that i'm wearing today there was actually a little something something to this one when i first put it on i thought it looked really pretty and really nice and you know it does need a setting spray to help it to get to that 10 hours of wear but it is settling in my wrinkles and um, it's still not going to be one of my favorites so you know if you're really dying to try one of these i'd say maybe get a sample of the hourglass give it a try see if you like it neither of them are better than any of my top five to six foundations and i probably really won't even reach for either of them again what foundations do i like better you may ask well <laughs> there are quite a few my current holy grail foundation the one that i love the most out of every foundation on the planet is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. This is exceptional on mature skin. It is so beautiful. It wears all day. It doesn't settle into your wrinkles. It looks natural and skin-like. This just blew my socks off. If you wanna see the full review on it, I can link that for you right up here. And my second runner up is going to be the number one to Chanel. I also love this. This is so beautiful on the skin. It's not as bulletproof, not quite as perfect as the Dior. It doesn't wear quite as long, but it is pretty darn good. Like I do get 10 hours of wear out of it and it looks beautiful on my skin. It's just gorgeous. I love it. From the drugstore, I love the L'Oreal True Match Nude. I also love the L'Oreal True Match Original. These are both great drugstore foundations, easy to get a shade match, look beautiful on mature skin, so you can give those a try. And for something a little less foundation-y, I love this Say Slip Tint. This is like a tinted moisturizer. I just feel like my skin looks so youthful and just so much better than it actually is every time I wear this. So those would be my top recommendations, the things that I would recommend trying for mature skin before I would try either of these guys, but I'm glad I gave them a try. I'm glad I got to do this video for you guys. Let me know in the comments below the video what foundations are on your radar, what foundations you want me to test for an upcoming video. So if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.